we really built a platform that we're going to build a future on. We've seen a 5% improvement across the board in cart building. So that's the time it takes to start a cart and, and actually check out a customer. So tell me what's new here. How are we customizing this checkout? My friends, I spend all my time in the Shopify online store. I imagine some of you are similar, but Shopify is so much more than that. It extends beyond just the online store. If you're selling in person, you have a retail location. They've got Shopify point of sale, Shopify POS. And that is what we're going to be discussing today. About a year ago, I tested it out at Chalet Garden Center. Got to see it in action, in person, and I thought it was really cool. I loved it. Genuinely impressed that it has come such a long way since it was first announced years ago, and it has continued to advance. And so today, to walk us through Shopify POS V10, latest version, hear what the updates are, we're joined by Shopify VP of Retail, Ray Reddy. So Ray, is Shopify POS your baby? How long have you been working on this thing? I've been working on this for only a few months at Shopify uh, when I, I joined the company this year, but I've been working on the, the problem of, of how to help uh, local businesses win um, in, you know, by just building the best technology for them for a long, long time. A lot of businesses know Shopify for their online store. Millions of millions of customers use us across many countries, many verticals, all all sizes of businesses. The, the, the POS is actually uh, also a very large business for Shopify. It's hundreds of thousands of, of physical locations use the POS now. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to uh, talk about our latest release and uh, what's what's in store and how we're thinking about the future. All right, my gosh, Shopify POS, how long has this thing been around? We're on V10 already. POS has been around for almost 10 years at Shopify, which is which is hard hard to believe. Um, it actually was a startup within Shopify for a long, long time. It was incubated uh, inside of the company and and has just has has grown into. Uh, you know, one of one of the flagship products over over the last decade. So with V10, is this an overhaul, a few feature upgrades, some nice to haves? What's new? What do we got going on here? Yeah, V10 has been, I would say, it's a has been almost a ground up uh, refresh and 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 rebuild of of the POS. And you know, I think what customers see is some major upgrades, and and I'll talk more about those. It's significantly faster. There's there's more um, uh, just the amount of time it takes for staff to complete routine regular uh, checkout workflows has, has gone down. Uh, we really try to make it as easy on employees and staff as possible to you know go through high volume weekends and things like that. And we we track all of this data. So that 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 really is a sort of our north star is like how do we really simplify operations in store and make this easy to use and intuitive. Um, the other thing we we care about is a lot of retail stores, you know, we know that they have they have a lot of staff, and sometimes the turnover rate is is high. And what that means is they're constantly training new employees, and so that's that's the other thing we care about is how intuitive is our software. Uh, like in an ideal world, we don't want people to need training manuals or or to need weeks of you know ramp up time to to to, to get up and running. And we hear that employees can learn in one shift; they can learn the POS and get up and running on it. So it's things like that that we really care about, and all of those things are a lot better. Uh, but beyond that, we really built a platform uh, that we're going to build a future on. Uh, and it's a lot more extendable. It allows develop, it's a lot more customizable. It allows, uh, we have thousands of developers who build solutions on, on POS um, to help customize our software for different business needs. Um, so all of those things have gotten better. You may not be able to see, you know, it's sort of the tip of the iceberg thing. What's visible to merchants is good, but the platform we've really invested in it uh, to, you know, to be something scalable for us um, going forward. When a client comes to me and says, "Hey, you, we want to blow things up, start over, redesign, rebuild our store," my next question is always, "What happened?" Right? There's something that mm -hmm. would have sparked that decision. Nobody wakes up and goes, "Ah, let's rebuild it." So in your case, what's the catalyst? What's the thing that sparked the need for this overhaul? I think it's two things. Uh, one is we always, our North Star always is, how do we build the best product for our customers? And sometimes when, when, when we think about that, we conclude that the, the path we've been going down 
isn't going to get us where we want to get to. Uh, and specifically in this case, I think one of the things we believe is that businesses today have to really pretzel themselves around the way that software works. This is like a, you know, I'll, I'll avoid naming names here. I think it's one of the biggest complaints of businesses. They feel like they have to almost adapt their business and, and workflows to the way that some uh, product manager decided that some you know, software flow was, was, was going to work. And I think in Shopify, we really believe that this is not how it should be. Um, that you know the, the, the vision, and we're not there yet, but I would say this is where we are working really hard to get to this place where software adapts to your business, not the other way around. And that's what V10 is. V10 is a, uh, we've taken all of our learnings over the last many, many years of, of, being this, uh, of being in this business and realizing that we have to build a platform for the future that can allow, that's more customizable and that developers can really build on. So you don't fully, like all of that may not be a, super transparent and apparent to folks right now because it's really the platform. But over the years um, and even over the, the, the coming quarters, I think we'll just, what we will see is significantly better APIs, extensibility, uh, things that allow builders to build on top of shop, right? So that, that, that was the spark of why we did this. Okay, here's where I reveal my ignorance and the finer points of POS. How do I upgrade, right? Like if I'm on version nine, and I want to go to version 10, how do I do that? What's that process look like? It's a good question. It's actually just as easy as an app store update. So I think that there's two models on how updates work. For um, large and enterprise retailers, they tend to have um, MDMs that manage their fleet of hardware in, in store, uh, so device management software. Uh, the, the main reason is they don't want to upgrade and change uh, workflow and POS software without you know, uh, controlling when that happens. You know, you don't want to do it in the middle of a busy season, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, or or they might want to train uh, employees on something, or they might want to actually restrict access to to something before making it available. So, so we give enterprises and large um, uh, retailers a lot of control. So, when we publish an update, they they can choose when they want to push it down to their 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 fleet of hardware and their stores. Uh, but for everyone else. It's just an app update. All right, simple enough. Now, you mentioned V10 is faster. It's not like it has load times, right? What specifically is faster here? What are we talking about? Efficiency for retail staff is really, really important. Like re retail staff are, you know, are typically checking out like hundreds of, of, of customers a day. Uh, and so when you say speed, that, that's what we really mean is how fast can employees uh, complete the action they're trying to complete on the POS. Uh, how, how many clicks does it take? Uh, how, how cumbersome is it? Uh, so we measure this. We actually measure time to complete a task. So for example, we consolidate the most common daily actions. So that's like looking up an item, adding it to cart, applying a discount, starting an exchange. Uh, we've, we've taken all of these things and put it into one contextual action bar. So it's just one tap away. That, that's one way of like not having people hunt around for common actions. It's all, it's all just sitting in the left pane. We've seen a 5% improvement uh, across the board in cart building. So that's the time it takes to start a cart and, and actually check out a customer. So that's when we say speed, that's what we mean. It's just employees can find and do the actions they're, they're trying to complete quickly and seamlessly. So when we talk about speed, we're really talking about operational efficiency and a 5% improvement in a single customer interaction may not sound by much, but that compounds, That's right? right? If I've got an entire line of people waiting to check out, now if all of those are 5% faster, the experience for the person at the end of the line just got quite a bit better. And now I'm paying people hourly and I've got multiple locations and this is happening every day over weeks, months, years, well, there's some serious advantages to gaining this speed. Exactly. Exactly. All right, let's talk Bopis. Buy online, pick up in store, or you know, curbside, whatever you want to call it. Since the pandemic, that has exploded, has taken off. We see it a lot. What has changed here in V10? Does this work better? You making it easier for us? What's going on? So one of the one of the biggest features we we launched as part of fulfillment is the ship and carry out feature. This was a very common merchant frustration, and you know the the, the reason is that historically in the in the previous version, in in a cart, staff had to choose between shipping a product to a customer or picking it up in store at 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 the cart level. 
And so that, f that forced just a really awkward workarounds for mixed baskets. Basically, they had to split them in a, in a really weird way. In the new flow, uh, you, you actually have a split fulfillment method line by line. So you can ship the bulky lamp, but carry out the light bulbs all in the same order with one payment. Um, and so, you know, the, the early feedback from customers is just uh, no duplicate orders in, in, in the back office now. Uh, a lot of those like inventory sync headaches are, are gone because there's just a, a simplified view of orders. Checkout time for mixed baskets is down very, very meaningfully because again, you can do it in, in one transaction as opposed to, you know, multiple. And I think shoppers just perceive almost like a, a, a flexibility. Uh, it's just such a seamless transaction that uh, it, it, it actually lifts NPS scores of, of how easy it was to go into a store and take the things you want. And, and sometimes, you know, there's other examples where there's things just not available in store but that can be shipped to you from online. And the ability to just seamlessly add that to a cart, have one payment and check out, uh, I think it's just, it's just an easier um, interaction in store. Another new feature I want to hit, customization in our branding. I'm a firm believer that until I could personalize something, until I could tweak it, I don't own it. You know, that's how I make it mine is through customization. So tell me what's new here. How are we customizing this checkout? Yeah, so, so you know, the biggest one, and again, I would say this is the start of um, us uh, doing more and more in this area, but we, we think about it as like visual trust. So um, brands have a, you know, they have their, their brand colors, their, their their logo, and and our belief is that the more that customers can um, engage in the brand, um, and and the more that brands can build trust in every interaction that a that a customer has with them, all the way through payment, the better that is. So what it is 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 that you can now put your brand colors and logo on uh, uh, on the payment terminal, and so customers get to see that and experience that as they. As they check out, what we see is customers are just more willing to engage in uh, maybe sharing customer information or engaging in payment, uh, uh, whether that's getting a receipt or a gift receipt, being able to self serve on these things because it feels like an extension of the brand, uh, and and that trust sort of carries you know carries forward. Oh, and hardware. What hardware does Shopify POS need support? Yeah, I don't know. How does it work? What gear do I get? Today, uh, most retailers run point of sale on either an iPad or an Android tablet. Um, so it, it it runs across both platforms. And with that, we you know we have a hardware store that gets you set up with all of the hardware that that you would need. So uh, that's receipt printers, barcode scanners, in some cases even RFID uh, wands for for who have uh, retailers who've gone in that direction. So yeah, you you get you basically get everything that that you need to get set up. You can order uh, across different brands. Um, and you know, as we expand across more more verticals and more more countries, one of the things that we uh, we really want to do is provide lots of choice. Because I think what we find, you know, at one point, I think that when we were very um, focused on just one or two verticals in in a handful of countries. You can have a very limited set of SKUs. You could say, you know, here's here's one payment terminal or one whatever that that you know, piece of hardware that can work for the majority of your customers. But I think as you expand across countries and expand across verticals, you just realize that people need different types of hardware for their businesses. So um, I think our our belief now is, you know, the way I think of it is, it's not we're not actually trying to win on hardware. Um, Hardware is about providing choice, and we want to win on software. Uh, so I almost talk about it as we, we have to not lose on hardware in order to win on software. And all I mean by that is there's, there's, a, lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot of companies out there that build great hardware today. We want to take our limited resources at, at Shopify and focus on what we're really, really good at, and that's building amazing software. Um, and we want to partner with with everyone that builds hardware for POSs and, and you know, pick the best hardware and make that available to, to our customers. All right, Ray, you've seen it all. What's the one feature you're most proud of in POS? I think speed. Speed is just such a killer feature. And, and I think this is the thing we, we focus on. I think of it as, as, again, speed in two ways. Like, you know, one of the things that I, I, I talk to our team about is sometimes when, as, an, as, as a Shopify employee, when you test something, you might test it by doing a workflow once or twice or three times. 
but it's very different when you're doing it like 200 times a day, right? And I and I think that level of empathy for uh, for staff and 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 really trying to immerse yourself in what staff have to do on a day to day basis and 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 just like the pressure of that long line and needing to like work through it on on, on a weekend on a busy Saturday. Um, so we really believe that like at the end of the day, this isn't about like one sexy feature that matters. It's really just like speed and and trust. Like staff want to know that this thing is going to work when it matters. Um, and so I think that you know those are the two things we really focus on. And 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 so speed for me is is just a, a big deal. I think speed builds trust. Um, when you can do when you can do it easily. Um, and you can do it quickly. I think that's that's so so important. So I think that's probably the the thing I'm I'm proudest of. You know, Ted is just like how fast you can do things. That's great. So if I want to try it out, I just search Shopify POS in my app store, and it's there. I'll find it. Totally. Uh, yeah. So POS POS ten is is out. If you have hardware, you can you just download it from the app store. And in fact, if you want to try it out, uh, you don't even need um, you don't even need an, an an iPad or a tablet. You can just download it right out right onto your phone, create an account, and and try it out. It's free. Couldn't be easier. Ray Ready, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Kurt.